Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. So, we got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys, sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God, you made it. Yeah. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. I'm Nathan Simmons. And look who it is. It's me. Old Coyotes R Us, and this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest endings. Wow. Oh, man. I'm energized up, dude. I got the yeah, knots going my through your veins right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but unfortunately, uh, someone in our family uh, got taken out by a drive-by yeah. by some Asian gangsters on motorcycles, yeah. and Ma- Mally's not joining us this week. Uh. I, I'm so I'm so ready for all of us to things to slow down a little mm-hmm. bit, and we can all get together as a family for a barbecue uh-huh, with some very dry chicken, some super dry chicken. Mm-hmm. I've been meaning. Mally's been promising to take me to that Cuban restaurant too. Cha cha cha! Yeah, <laughs> God, dude, dude. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the table. Put everything out there. Uh huh. I fucking love this movie. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it was so funny rewatching this yesterday for the first time in years. Mm-hmm. And my takeaway was it's kind of like, I mean, compared to where this series goes, mm-hmm. it's so humble. Yeah. This is like a, the stakes are so low. There's, I love it. There's two chase sequences mm-hmm. and they happen 10 minutes before the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. It is fully a point break remake. It is such a point break remake. <laughs> and, uh, and also just the credit based on an article by Ken Lee mm-hmm. made me laugh really hard. Mm-hmm. Like I, that was a thing we were doing in the early 2000s. Like yeah. live free or die hard was just based on a New Yorker article. <laughs> Van Wilder was based on uh, comedian Burt Kreischer's right. Rolling Stone article. So, yeah. Van Wilder was based on the novel Push by, by Sapphire. Sapphire. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'm very disappointed mm. because... I know Mally loves this franchise. I know. He doesn't care. I don't think he cares for these first couple, but after the credits roll on this one, uh-huh. I am out. I'm I know. Well, okay. that's, that's what's so <laughs> funny is like, so I, I watched this with my girlfriend mm-hmm. and the, the uh, humble brag and the, the <laughs> oh, like, after God, the- Oh, I got a girlfriend over here, Mr. <laughs> Rich Boy. <laughs> uh, she watches car movies with me. <laughs> uh, no, uh, but it, it was so funny because after the movie, uh, we, we were, I, I said what I just said to you where I was just like, it's so so humble mm-hmm. and 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 she goes what do you mean and i said well <laughs> like you know they went to space in the yeah. last one yeah. and by by the seventh movie they're working for a a, a shadow government run by mr nobody mm-hmm. played by kurt, kurt russell. russell and helen mirren shows up in these fucking movies I- idris elba is a cybernetically enhanced super soldier yeah he's iron man Shirley <laughs> theron plays a hacker who can control all the cars in the world mm-hmm. and she's like like slack jawed staring at me trying to figure out if this is one of my famous bits <laughs> <laughs> And I just pulled up IMDb and I was like, no, no, look, look. And I'm, I'm like describing a scene from Furious 7. And uh-huh. I was like, so then The Rock stands up and flexes out of his cast. Oh my and God. she goes, The Rock is in these? And yeah. I said, oh, you sweet summer child. Oh, he's Iron Man in these movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if, if you didn't know. <laughs> he picks up a full minigun with his arms. Uh, I, Charlie Theron, <laughs> not for nothing, rocking the same haircut as Danny Lloyd in The Shining in these movies. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who decided that yeah, was the way the to go. One, but yes. Yeah. No, no I... I I watched one, two, and three, like, unironically when yeah. I came... Because I was a kid when these came out. I was in my, like, preteens, essentially. Sure. And my, I, have, I have an older brother who's four years older than me. And so, when he was getting into cars around this movie, the time this movie came out, I was by yeah. the transit of property also getting to, into cars. <laughs> sure. uh, and this movie perfectly encapsulates that lifestyle, uh-huh. that time period. Like, it felt so much more real mm-hmm. than what it actually is. Well, and it's so funny because... Like they clearly base this off of journalistic research, yeah. But in, in in but in a way that is like still not accessible, yeah. Because they are consistently throwing out terminology to make themselves sound legit mm-hmm. while not letting the audience know so much car jargon, yeah. Like I, so I mean, we've talked about me with with card games, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, so car games, you have an issue with, too? <laughs> I, dude. Uh, so here's the thing: I can't drive a stick, me and either. So when I when I watch these movies, and they are 
intricately edited. Mm-hmm. I mean, the the, sh- the the quick cut shots of people changing gears mm-hmm. and pushing the gas, and I'm just like, I don't know what they're doing, but I guess it makes them go more. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing about this first movie in particular. It's uh-huh. like everyone has a t- like like a video game, like a turbo cheat button mm-hmm. on, in their steering wheel, in their cigarette <laughs> lighter. Like everyone to got- the point where one dude is just playing Gran Turismo in I his love car. That guy. Love that guy. Love him. <laughs> but no, I. I feel you like these these movies I, there's no way this is this is even possible like the, sh- the first street race in this movie you know with la's famously uh free of traffic roads sure. um, all you got to do is wait for a murder and yeah. you can you can block mm-hmm. off <laughs> several blocks and only one pizza man played by the director mm-hmm. uh will will interrupt you and, and he knows what's up because he yells you fucking street racers yes and, and right near LAX, by the way. Yes, I don't know if, yeah. if you know the geography of, of this stuff, but this is so, there's no fucking way this would happen. That's so funny. And, and the way this first race, I know we're, I know we're jumping the bit here, but yeah, yeah. the way this first race goes, they are racing, they might as well be racing from LAX to Burbank. Like, it's like a 40 mile stretch, it feels like. Oh, really? No, it's not really, but it feels like it. Oh, way, okay. With all the NOS and everything, it sure. just feels like they're just going. There is a shot during that race race that looks like what the Wachowskis would do mm-hmm. with Speed Racer 11 years later. And it, it is so funny you mentioned that because <laughs> I haven't seen Speed Racer. But oh, I love that movie. After I finished it, I was like, I kind of want to see the Speed Racer movie. It now. is. I mean, it's it's kind of a mess, mm-hmm. but I love it so much because it is, it is the closest thing we've ever gotten to a live action cartoon. I, I, I think this might be this week that I finally watch it. Yeah. I've, I hear people say it's like a cult classic at this point. So it's so camp. Everyone's giving cartoon performances mm-hmm. like I, I just yeah I, I think you might have fun with it okay well can I also tell you uh-huh. you mentioned the way this movie feels humble I agree and I think there's one factor you can point to with that okay that the result and uh he's not completely bald in this movie but <laughs> this dude it's bald fucking ego driven balloon sized head yeah. that is Vin Diesel yeah this this muscle with a mouth sure like the more these movies go on uh-huh. the worse they get because they become Vin, Vin Diesel's Diesel movie yes and 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 I mean it is all stuff like that I mean I, I have such conflicted feelings about Vin Diesel mm-hmm. I feel the same pretty much the same way about him I feel about The Rock where I'm just like you are your ego has become its own multimedia yes. empire and yes you've created this like meta narrative around yourself to the point where like he was like trying to appeal to the rock to come back oh, to the series but he, but he did it in that instagram post where he photoshopped himself to look bigger yep and, and it's it's just stuff like that that's just so wild and uh, do, controversial statement maybe He's very good in this movie. I was gonna like after you finished your thought, I was gonna be like, not for nothing. Vin Diesel is actually pretty fucking good in this movie, and, and it's so strange to to not only see him like kind of dialed in and giving like this. So he he's always rode the line between reserved and nothing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And in this one, it's it's very reserved. And when he gets those quiet moments, he's really compelling. Yes, and. He has human proportions. I was going to say movie. he's not mostly no. Neck. Like him and Vince are almost the same size, <laughs> yeah, and, right? But he has a commanding presence in this movie. Like he plays menacing. Like when he steps out of the shadows when they catch yeah. Brian breaking into the into Hector, Hector's thing. Sure, he looks like the shape coming. Yes, out of he the kind of does. <laughs> and then maybe my favorite performance from him in this movie is mm. when Brian calls in the helicopter and he put he notices he's an undercover cop like, oh yeah that is genuinely tense and you like, see him like think should i kill him if yeah. he's saving my friend this is bad i can't believe this i i love the moment i mean again jumping ahead but i love the moment in the car between them when he he like just turns to look out the window and says i'll die before i go back mm-hmm. and, I'm, and i was just like yeah yeah, yeah that's good that's good vin the, the early vin diesel is like the only good vin diesel yeah. because he's also good i love pitch black too yes and i was also going to say he's good in saving Private Ryan, mm, mm-hmm. because he could have been such a character actor. Sure. Like he could have made well more respectable filmography. And not to say big budget movies can't be respectable, sure, but those movies, course. let's call a spade a spade. Those movies are garbage. Like, yes, they are. <laughs> they can be fun yeah. for you, and you can admire. But they're ultimately disposable. That's my point. Like, mm-hmm. I don't have a problem with people liking those movies, but anytime someone comes to me and says, "Oh, they're genuinely good movies," I'm like, "You're you have smooth brain syndrome." Like, no, they're not. Do you <laughs> do you remember when Find Me Guilty came out and everyone was just like, "Are you gonna go see?" 
the Vin Diesel with hair uh, movie. Oh my god! Oh. I mean, it's it's a bad movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. He gives a pretty interesting performance in it, though. Like to what you're saying, like if he when he commits himself and he's doing something other than I'm a superhero and I can't be beaten. That's another reason why those movies suck. Yeah, the, the fucking contrast. There's no of, stakes. Yeah, yeah, there's no there's no way to anything. It's I don't watch the show, but it's the same problem with like you know, The Walking Dead is ending, and it's sure. like, well, we know these characters won't die because the spinoffs are coming, and it's right. like, well, you just ruined all the weight you hold, yeah. like, you, all the goodwill you've built up, and yes, you're right, Vin Diesel does become uh, basically an Avenger, and this, this <laughs> yeah. is his Avengers franchise, yeah. but but his performance, by the t- more the movies go on, just boils down to, he might as well be saying, I am Groot, like, oh, he yeah. doesn't say anything but family, family, family. Uh, leave, leave Brian out of this, this is all about family, and it's, this is, hey, where's Letty. Oh, these movies are terrible. I'm t- you can like them, audience. That is totally fine. And I do. And I, I've seen all of them. And I, I, I will say there there is significantly diminishing returns. Mm-hmm. As much as I I think I've said on this show before that I, I think Fast Five is like the peak of the series, but like yeah. it's still not a this this was like I was shocked that this movie felt like a movie yes. and not like a series of set pieces. Yes, they they, they people die in this movie. Uh, I mean, granted, one and a half ish yeah yeah or two i guess but- oh well that was the other thing like i mean after watching several sequels where it's built into their contracts that none of these characters can lose a fight mm-hmm. seeing vince like with his arm mangled oh, and all that like it's great you, they never have to call in a life flight helicopter yeah. for any of the other sequels no they wouldn't have a scratch on them no not they, at all they just hack into a submarine and steal it <laughs> I, i'm pretty sure at one point a parking garage falls on one of these guys and nothing uh-huh. they walk away with nothing not a bruise, nothing. In, in Furious 7, <laughs> Dom plays chicken twice oh. and wins. It's Doesn't so he fucking... also, like, deflect a monkey wrench with his arm or something he, like yeah, that? Yeah, I think so. Jesus There's also Christ. a bit in 6 when he uh, jumps off of a tank mm-hmm. across two bridges, grabs Michelle Rodriguez, changes direction in midair, mm-hmm. and then lands on another car's windshield uh, as it's going 70 miles an hour in his fight. <laughs> I, I've seen, I've watched up to seven because I wanted to see how they handled uh-huh. the Paul Walker thing. And sure. to me, not great. No. I know people like that Wiz Khalifa song and they think it's very well made, but they did as much as they could. Sure, I think, sure. But yeah. I think it's, it's fine. It's fine. Mm-hmm. But it's not good. Like, I just want people to just admit it. Like, yeah. yes, I like these movies. I recognize that they're stupid. No, I I recognize <laughs> that they're silly, and I I love the fact that this has become a, a, th- this insane operatic thing yeah. where like trying to chart when the movies take place in relation to each other is Ugh. a thing like like, it, like having to figure out oh okay these three movies take place before Jesus. Tokyo Drift is insane what is with the third movie in franchises just being like the outlier mm-hmm. Halloween 3 you got this 3 like uh-huh. I don't know and not for nothing uh-huh. I, the formula is by the time they beat a villain they'll be on the good guy's side in the next movie right I don't remember and I haven't seen the last two and I won't but <laughs> The, the, I'm surprised uh-huh. Lance, the other, uh, the the brother of the Asian gangster guy in this movie, mm-hmm. doesn't come back because he's not dead at the end of this movie. There's there's a lot of dangling threads out there, and then sometimes they'll bring people in for literally like a line of dialogue. Like I think Vince is in Fast Five, if I remember correctly. I think you're right, and I think. Uh, the guy from the third one shows up in one of those movies, too. He does. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus uh, Lucas Christ. Lucas Black is in seven. He's at Han's oh, funeral in Jesus one of fucking Christ. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. Han's not dead. God, so stupid. So, so I mean, stupid. that's the other thing is, like, we're just resurrecting characters. And, yeah. Like, if you can't, if you are taking this at face value, I think you're silly. Yeah. And, and I say that as someone who has seen all of these movies and gotten at least a bit of entertainment out of sure. them. Sure. That's, that's my whole pedestal that I stand on is, like, mm-hmm. you can enjoy these movies that is totally fine i'm not gonna tell you just please don't look at me in the eye and say like this is cinema like, this is unreproachable cinema yeah <laughs> exactly the same thing with marvel fanboys don't oh, look sure. at me and tell me that iron man 2 is citizen kane <sighs> it just don't <laughs> that's i was i was on this rant the other day but i was I, you know, I i love the mcu but i also beg marvel fans to watch any other movie anything else anything that doesn't feature a superhero and this these franchises included like all these fast and furious movies like when i see like a screenshot from Civil War and someone's just like look at this cinematography I'm like they are 
on a, on a green, green screen. screen. Yeah. They're, out of, they're not even, they couldn't even shoot at that airport. <laughs> yeah. You could say, check out these visual effects uh-huh. and I'll agree with you. Sure. But yeah, no, don't, it's, don't piss on me and tell me it's raining. And that's what this franchise tries to do. Like, right. these are legitimate action movies. No, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> yeah. No. Anyway. The, yeah. Okay. Off my tirade. Yes. Yeah. This movie, though. The Fast and the Furious. The Fast and the Furious, borrowing their their title, yeah. borrowing their plot synopsis, borrowing uh, specific beats of another movie. Like, nothing about this is original, no. but it works for me. Yeah. And I, I recognize this is not a good movie, but it is, for all intents and purposes, a complete thought. Like, it does feel like there are, like, plot cul-de-sacs, mm-hmm. though. Like... Like, I, I don't know that we needed race wars in the middle of this okay. movie, considering it's not really. And also just the number of times they say the fucking phrase uh, no, race wait, wars. Wait, 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 wait. I know we're going to have a whole mountain of information to talk about when it comes to race wars. But before we do that, we're already well into the podcast know, and we haven't even set it up for new listeners. So yeah, what is this? <laughs> what are we doing? Are, if you are tuning in for the first time, <laughs> thank you so much. I hope I didn't scare you off of my tirade about these movies. But. Yeah. This is the Silver Linings playlist, and it's a podcast where we watch movies where they're not happily ever after endings. Mm-hmm. And in this instance, by the time the credits start to roll, Paul Walker is going to be in a whole shit heap of trouble. Yeah. Vin Diesel's on the run. Jesse's dead. Uh, everything's happening. So it's we got to find the silver lining to this ending and we'll get there when we get there but yeah i so you did you see this in theaters no okay. this was definitely a tv watch for me oh, i think okay. this was i want to say this was on like usa all the time oh a hundred percent it had to have been this was a dvd for my household sure like, i just thought it was so funny too because i know when this movie came out all my brother's friends that i would hang out with uh surreptitiously like mm-hmm. we're all like guys the next one's gonna be called too fast too furious like trying to be clever <laughs> yeah and i'll be goddamned if they didn't if john singleton went like yeah that's fine let's do that yeah who cares <laughs> and I- i'll say this too that john singleton movie is also not good but it's somehow watchable it looks good yeah it- it's fine and plus i mean you put eva mendez in a movie and i'm i'm in the theater yeah. so don't worry about it. sure and i i also i remember read i read this interview with john singleton a while back where he was just talking about how he was kind of relieved that he didn't have to work with Vin Diesel or Ja Rule on it. Oh boy, could you imagine the luxury of not having either of those? <laughs> like, I mean, you still got Tyrese, so you didn't win out a hundred percent. Sure, but, sure, yeah. And that's nothing against Tyrese the person, but no, the, I, the character I am not a fan. Not a fan of well, the, Roman. Roman uh, depends on which one you're talking yeah. about the the guy from Too Fast Too Furious or yep. the computer genius yep. he becomes in the sequel. Yep, same with Ludacris too. And sure, I, yeah, I gee, and. Apparently, it's supposed to be that was supposed to be Jaw. I don't know how true this is, but that was Ludacris's role was supposed to be a continuation of Jaw Rules. Yes. Could you imagine if Jaw Roll was the computer hacker <laughs> in Fast Seven, Eight, Nine, and then the Fire Festival happens? What that shit show would look like? <laughs> Oh, now I kind of yeah. want. Now I kind of want revisionist history here. Tarantino, you got one movie left. What if you? Oh my god! Remake <laughs> Too Fast, Too Fear. Can you imagine? Oh my god! I don't think uh, the world is already crazy enough. Right. Why? Sh- why shouldn't that happen at this point? <laughs> All right. Well, we're like already like 15, 20 minutes in. Why don't we talk about for those who need a refresher, mm. some of the information regarding the production and the release of the original two thousand one, The Fast and the Furious. Not to be confused with the fourth movie, Fast, Fast and Furious. And Furious. <sighs> or the Roger Corman film, The Fast and the yes, Furious. Of which this movie borrows the title. Right. And literally nothing else. Right. Um, so yeah, the year's 2001. This is barely pre-9-11. Right. <laughs> so Very important. Keep that in mind. Uh, the director is known scumbag Rob Cohen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we don't have to get into that. No, no, not at all. The movie stars, I think this is interesting, the way Roger Ebert's website lists. Uh, who do you think he pitches first mm-hmm. as the cast? Uh, Michelle Rodriguez. Ooh, third. Oh, okay. Okay, so we should put this out there. A lot of the main cast in this movie, these are like, if not their first movie, like within like the first three. It's a breakout for them. Yes. Does he list Rick Yoon first? He is second. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I don't think you will be surprised by the number one. <laughs> Matt Schultz is Vince. <laughs> no. What if I said? Oh, Ted if- Levine. Ted Levine? Nope. Oh, shit. Ted Levine not even listed. Wow. Not even listed. This is Big mistake. This is post Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. Not even on here. Is it Noel Guglielmi, our, oh, our I, MVP oh of my everything? God. No. Nope. Not even listed here. One of his many Hectors. I know. I know. Not even listed here. <laughs> And 
I'm just baffled. First, first of all, Rick Yoon mm-hmm. does Die Another Day and this movie within like a year of each other. Yeah. Michelle Rodriguez does Girl Fight, Resident Evil, and this movie within two years of each other. Yeah. And then Lost like a couple years after that. Yes. The number one on here, and the only thing I can think they're from other than this movie is before this is The Faculty. Does that tell you at all? <laughs> uh, is it? Oh, shit. Um, no. Who? Who is it? It's Jordana Brewster. Oh, of course. Number one on well, she is great list. in The fa- I mean, her character is so a monster in The Faculty, but she's so good in it. So good. Yeah. Jordana Brewster, Rick Yoon, Michelle Rodriguez, uh-huh. and then Paul Walker and Vin Diesel. Interesting. Yeah. Fascinating. Okay. The budget had... Uh, $38 million to its name, mm-hmm. and it managed to gross worldwide $207 million. Dang. It's it's no surprise this became a franchise at all. Yeah. So, uh, but currently sits at, I still think this is a little low, even though I recognize this movie's not good. <laughs> it's currently sitting at a 53% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, wow. I would probably put this in the mid 60s yeah. to low 70s, somewhere around there. I think that's fair. You know what shocked me was seeing David Ayer's name. I know at the at the top of this movie. I did, like totally forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Noted script doctor. Yeah. I think we're going to watch this trailer here, and yeah. I, I'm kind of interested because we kind of skipped through it earlier off off mic mm-hmm. just to make sure our levels were working properly, and boy, I read some of the copy. <laughs> I, I'm going to narrate it for the audience as we watch this because they need to know how ridiculous this copy is on this trailer. Absolutely. Lots of dissolves. When the sun goes down... <laughs> Another world comes to life. Blade 2. <laughs> Motherfucker's always trying to street race uphill. <laughs> so let's go for a ride. Oh, boy. the oh, That's saliva, right? Yeah, I think so. Well, they get two songs on the soundtrack then, huh? Yeah, I was shocked when the new metal kicked in in this movie. This is yours, but if you win, you get her too. Menage. Oh boy, yeah. it's my one of, maybe my favorite line read in the movie. <laughs> it's <laughs> what the hell is that all about? A business deal that went sour. Plus, I made the mistake of sleeping with his sister. What a weird trailer. Yeah, so far it's all been about sex. If the lines must be crossed. <laughs> if loyalties must be broken. Do it Do fast. It fast. <laughs> you know what the next copy is going to be? And, and furious. furious. <laughs> Amazing. God, there is so much to talk about. Oh, wait. They used the shot of them going through the barricade, but the train hadn't been superimposed mm-hmm. in the shot yet mm-hmm. in the trailer. That's interesting. Wow. Lots of the final chase. A lot of the final chase. Oh, man. There's, there's so much good in that trailer. There's a lot to talk about. So... While we're recording, just for the hell of it, I'm going to have the movie play here. Yeah. Vo- volume off. Sure. But, you know, we can, if something pops up for us, but I've got a lot of notes. And before we get into it, yeah. I'm going to bring back a dead bit here because I feel like I am compelled to. The drink of the film? The drink of the film, which I'll, I'll give you what. Ashley <laughs> warned me that you might do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually, I'm, I'm here to tell you uh, I'm following through with the bit. And uh-huh. uh, of course. I have to be drinking the obvious. Bud Light. No. Uh, <laughs> Corona. Yes. And here's the thing. I went to the gas station and I just, I saw the prices. I got a can of Corona, just a single. Just one can. Okay. Which I know is already, it's awful that it's in a can <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Do you want to take the over under on how much a six pack of Corona costs nowadays? Eleven ninety nine. You are not far off. Oh, really? Twelve ninety five. Fuck that. Get fucked. Yeah. I'm not buying nope. your subpar beer. No. I almost did it for the bit and I was just like, I can't. I no, I can't do it. Can't justify myself doing that. So I fucking hate Corona. I I'm hate sorry. Corona too. I'm doing this for you, audience. I hope you know that. So, so what we were afraid you were going to do is that there is a drink called the Paul Walker, Ooh. but don't look up the ingredients because it's very offensive. Can I guess that you light something on fire? Yeah, yeah. I had a feeling. Okay. Well, before I do that, yes, let's just say right out the gates, rest in peace, Paul Walker. Absolutely. What a tragedy. What a what a nice guy and not a bad actor by any means. Uh, just, uh, oh, <laughs> I, I think he. <laughs> I feel rotten because he's not. I don't think he's good in this. Okay, okay, okay. Well, let me let me crack this thing open first of all. Okay, that sounds so good. <laughs> uh, listen to that cheap cheap product. 
Have you seen the movie Hours that he's done? No, I have not. It's not bad at all. It's uh-huh. him. I I want to say it's during Hurricane Katrina. Okay. I'm probably wrong about that, but he's in a hurricane in New Orleans, I think. He has a, his baby girl is born. Mm-hmm. I believe the mom dies in childbirth and then the hospital loses power and the Oof. hurricane comes and he's stuck there with his premature baby. Oh, wow. And I think he gives a pretty rock rock solid performance in that. Okay. I, I remember thinking he was good in, what, what was that, Running Scared? Is that what it was called? I, um, I remember. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. He, he, I mean, he's there's other movies he's not great in, like Takers and. Sure. I, di- I didn't see that Joyride. Oh, I, I, I like Joyride, actually. But he, at that movie, I don't think anybody comes off particularly great in it aside yeah. from Steve Zahn. I, I think he unfortunately got roped up in this franchise and that prevented him from doing a lot of good. Yeah, that's what I was going to say is I think that, I think there's a, there was a solid actor in there that came out every once in a while, but this was mostly what he did for like yeah. the second half of his career. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, you saw who the role was offered to, though, right? I did not. Uh, it was offered to Eminem. I, I yes, I did know that, and also to Mark Wahlberg, and then Christian Bale was considered mm, for it. Christian Bale, the balls you would have to offer him this movie. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> oh, hold on. Wait a minute. I got his answer right. Yeah, here. You've got it. It's I forgot. It's right here. Yeah. Fuck's sake, man! You're amateur. Yeah, that's him with Vin Diesel in the later movies, and then like, uh, the, the fuck are you doing? Him on the PR tour, right? But then uh, the studio, no. the studio <laughs> wanted Timothy Oliphant for Dominic Toretto. Uh, um, I kind of love that, but he was like, "I just did Gone in sixty seconds." I'm yeah, not, I don't think so. I don't. I, no, I don't. I don't see him in the film. I think this movie is pretty. The cast works really well. Yeah. I think the chemistry here is actually kind of unbelievable. Yes, like, I, I agree. I buy that these two are friends in this movie. Yes. And Paul Walker, not for nothing, the worst undercover cop maybe ever <laughs> sure. in a movie. Boy. You know, I forgot that's a reveal. Yeah. Like, in, like, watching the movie, I remembered it starting with him, like, you know, at the offices or something. Yep. And then, no, it's it's like 40 minutes into this thing. Yep. Also, I think Jordana Brewster is fantastic in this. Again, I think pretty much every... I don't think there's a weak performance except for maybe Jaw Roll in this movie. Yes. For what they're given, I should say that. Like, there's, there's no Academy Award nominees here, but... Well, what's so funny is almost everyone, aside from maybe Letty, gets their little, like, high school monologue moment. Yeah. Like, even Jesse has, like, this, like, soul-bearing scene. And I think the actor playing jesse's good oh yeah absolutely he's great i i like that little scene of him with with paul walker but yeah. i tell you leon gets no screen time in this but he's all he's all quipped sure yeah and he, i almost expected you to go now who's leon again I, yeah I, I i yes i did for a second then i looked it up <laughs> so this is why i like this movie right off the gate the opening okay. heist with him on the truck i think it's interesting yeah i think i like that it's low stakes yeah I do not care for the world's... Uh, not every movie needs to be world-ending. Sure. And again, that's what these movies become. They're literally just robbing... They have to get into a sky beam to oh get TV-VCR combos. That's literally all they're doing. <laughs> they're stealing VCRs. Yeah. Upwards of $6 million, the FBI agent says. That's yeah. a lot of VCRs. <laughs> you know, there were uh, there was a gang that was doing this in London last year to steal PS5s. I believe it. Like, they were boxing trucks in with, like, two or three cars and then just jumping onto the onto the car under the trucks. I believe it. It's crazy. Yeah. That's why I think the movie works. Like in remind me in point break mm-hmm. it, it is bank robberies, right? Yes, or is it bond? Right. Yeah, okay. See, this is lower stakes. I think it's it fits in with the car culture. Yeah. The only thing that doesn't make sense is you want to be incognito with these black civics, but then you put green underglow on them. Okay. Right. You you make yourself super recognizable super, as part of that gang. Super ru- Yeah. Yeah, I agree. But the sports cars uh-huh. going under the big rig oh, bed good. was real good. One of the coolest things I'd ever seen in my life up to that point. <laughs> sure. And so completely impractical. Because I don't know if you've driven alongside a 16 wheeler anytime recently. There is no fucking way. I don't like to. Yeah, no. And even if you do, there's no no fucking way it it works. No. And they're all just raw dog in the road. They're raw dog in the road. Yeah. God, man. I'm just we have the movie on and I'm going to be in LA next week, and I'm so excited. Visit all the locations. Yeah. I'm going to go to Toretto's Diner, order a disgusting- Try the tuna. God. <laughs> <laughs> that is- <laughs> 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 Okay. So, what is what is Toretto's? It's a bodega, basically, right? Like okay, Basically, yeah, yeah. An LA bodega. Well, it's weird. So, it, it yes. So, it seems to be a general store slash restaurant yeah. where people can like sit and have coffee, and yeah, Vince is angry immediately. So, here's the thing I don't understand about Vin Diesel. Uh-huh. I don't understand 
understand about the Toretto family dynamic. Uh-huh. So they have this bodega slash restaurant. They, he has a garage. Right. And he's still in the DVD players and all that stuff. And it's just them two. Like, I'm like, how much more yeah, money? He seems to be an entrepreneur. Yeah, I guess. I mean, who's running Toretto's when they're out at Race Wars? Do they just close up shop? Yeah, I mean, Race War. If you're, if you're participating in a race war, it seems to be the thing that's the that, that matters the most to you. God, I I know I know I know we're going to talk so much about race wars, but we'll get to really get there. I want to save it. Just Paul Walker in this eclipse at the beginning here, just uh-huh. perfectly exhuming this era of the early 2000s where car uh-huh. culture I felt like was at its peak. Like, well, in it, it, this movie looks like 2001, right? So like everything's orange. orange. Like there is like a filter over every shot. Yeah, it, I mean. I, not for nothing, it is LA, it is the summer. I uh-huh. feel like it does really amplify the heat of the desert. Right. I mean, like, Vin Diesel is constantly perspiring. Just glistening, yeah. <laughs> Just glistening like baby oils all over. And <laughs> I think it's a nice contrast because at this time we were all doing the green filters. That's and true, I, I like yeah. seeing something a little different, so... It, it it works for me. The editing in this fist fight is insane. Yeah, though. it's so like it. This is like the one part of the movie where I'm like, this is incomprehensible. Mm-hmm. And I, I, the, I did. Mi- I found myself missing Justin Lin's directing style in in this movie. I I think it works for this movie. Yeah, like the fast cutting and everything. And also, I mean, we were just talking about the color. I am a sucker in general for an LA based movie. Yeah, like a movie that just tells you. This is LA. It's pre 9 11 and it is hot. It's hot. It's hot outside. I love it. Everybody's like, squinting. Yeah, Santana would be proud. Like, man, <laughs> it's a hot one. It is a hot one in this movie. This is also, there's this whole joke here with, during the fist fight of, oh, you got three names. You, that sounds like a serial killer. Mm-hmm. I think it's kind of a funny line. And oh, yeah. There's a couple <laughs> of really good zingers in this. And also, this is coupled with the fact that, you know, he just, he orders a tuna sandwich mm-hmm. every day for like weeks. No crust. I like the tuna. Nobody likes the tuna. I agree. No one, you can, a tuna sandwich on a hot day mm-hmm. at a bodega. <laughs> Does seem insane. God, you are a serial killer. Like, what is wrong with I remember, you? I remember being on, on tour and... And one of one of my bandmates ordered a, an egg salad sandwich at a gas station. Oh. And they said, "Are you trying? <laughs> like, do you want to fucking die? Like, oh. what are we? What are we? We're in North Carolina oh. in July. Oh, I, I can't get past it. I can't get past it. <laughs> no, uh, I mean, we do get an f bomb here with Vince, yeah. but I, I am going to LA next week I, to visit again. Uh-huh. Uh, we don't have Fat Burger here. I don't know if you ever had it. It's not, not bad, no. but." A double cheese with fries for two ninety five. That's a pretty good deal. I think that it's got to be. Good. It's, it's got to be better than a fucking tuna sandwich on white with no crust at a bodega, my boy. Yeah. No. No AC in that bodega either. By the way, just there are moments where I can't tell if something's meant to be a joke because all of the sort of alpha male characters deliver every line with the same cadence and de- like. Yeah. It is every line is da 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 da. Yeah. Da 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 da. Da, 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 da. It's a dick swinging contest verbally. Absolutely. It is. I mean, it's but it's just so. It's there's no change to tone. So mm. I'm like, are you kidding now, or what's the deal? <laughs> I I like this uh this watch your back song. Yeah. I mean, it might as well be this version of this movie. It's look out, man! Drop from wall card. Like, it, <laughs> yeah, and it's so it's so it's telling you exactly what's happening. Watch your back, man. <laughs> but while Brian's pulling up at this at this street meet, mm-hmm. the song changes like three times. Oh my god! Yes. I wrote that down. But it also <laughs> seems diegetic to the scene. So is there a DJ just off screen who can't make up his fucking mind? Here's, here's what I think it's supposed to be, but they don't <laughs> okay. do it well. I think it's supposed to be you're going through all these different cars. You're hearing what they're playing out of their okay. car stereo. I buy that. But it's not done well because they're, they dissolve. It's not mixed in that no. way. So it's, it is so strange. It's not diegetic, but they're trying to pass it off as diegetic. It's, it's terrible. It also always fucks with me when I hear a song by the actor that's also in the yep, scene. Yep. So it's I was just like, Ja, what are you doing? There, there's a couple things I want to talk about before we get to the first race scene. Sure. Just once, I want to shout, you embarrass me! <laughs> and my friend fucking feels it. Uh-huh. My God. Th- th- I mean, that's alpha energy that I do not possess, but I just, just once, I would like to feel what that feels like. Absolutely. My other one mm-hmm. is when we, when 
Brian goes to to Harry's and he mentions, I need Nos. Oh, yeah. Three simple words that this franchise took and ran with. Yeah. <laughs> Which happens multiple times throughout this movie. There's so many moments where you're like, you can see the building blocks that the formula will become. Uh-huh. So, so. Well, and it doesn't hurt that there's like five Nos posters on the wall behind <sighs> him when he says it. This movie is paid for by Nos. So yeah. It probably was part of the budget. Did you ever, did you ever, did you ever like that energy drink? You ever? Never. <laughs> I don't think I ever tried it. I don't think I did. I used to drink it a lot because I worked at Best Buy and it was like, they had like a partnership. So there was like a ton there all the time. Sure. And if you'll permit me, it, it, much like our Doritos discussion in oh boy. Uh, Paranormal Activity, there uh-huh. were a lot of different NOS flavors. Oh boy. And I just want to read a few that have been discontinued. Oh, oh boy. Okay. Oh, discontinued. Is it the whole drink discontinued? If not, it should be. No, <laughs> NOS is still around and NOS GT Grape is still around Ugh. and a couple of others. Ugh. But uh, some of the ones that have been discontinued include NOS Cherried Out, <laughs> NOS Charged Citrus, uh. and my personal favorite, NOS Rowdy. <laughs> Oh, God. Does it just taste like tuna on white with the crust cut off? Like, I hope so. <laughs> Nos Rowdy. Noel Guglimi showing up here. Yeah. I, I think he's got one of the my favorite lines in the movie because it's just so stupid. And he's like, I got a last name too, but I can't pronounce it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He's so good. Every time he pops up in something, I'm always so happy. Not good, though. Ja Rule talking to himself in the third person. Sure. Get the fuck out of here. He's like, Edwin knows a lot. Shut up, no. Edwin. <laughs> I, I got very confused by uh, so many things. I don't know why every time he was on screen, and I just had trouble understanding what was happening. Yeah. Because I, I love when this woman comes up to him, she grabs his hand and puts it on her breast. And she goes, if you win, you get her too. Can and I, it, can, it, wait, 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 wait. Can I guess what you're going to say next? <laughs> you think you thought she was talking about her other breast, right? Because <laughs> yes. I did too. For the longest time. It takes, it takes like four or five seconds before it cuts yeah. to that other woman. Yes. And so I said out loud, I was a little, I was a little drunk at the time, but I said out loud, both titties. Yeah, that's what I did. I, for the longest time, I thought, and then I just thought the other girl was like, just cheering him on. Yeah. I didn't realize, oh, he's, and then he says menage. I mean, I'm t- when I'm seeing this movie for the first time. I didn't understand. Sure. But yeah, I completely agree. Ah, so funny. Yeah. No, I had the same thing. I was like, I was like, well, why is he, why does he yell that? I I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, yeah. It took me a long time to, pick, to put that together. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. There's, there's worlds within worlds in this movie and I'm just, I'm unlocking it. Not for nothing. Ja Rule, Eglin for a threesome is not something I need to ever see in a movie. <laughs> no, 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 no. For sure. What do, you, what do you think that conversation was like? With the two girls. Like, only if he wins are we do with it. Right. Well, one of them comes up and she goes, you get me regardless of if you win or lose. But then, and he then, does, then she does it. She's, she's a dirty liar. Right. She's like, no, you lost. <laughs> what a dirty liar. It's really funny. I don't even know where this location is. Like, no. where they all meet up at. I don't know. Okay. So, am I to understand yeah. that... This is this. This is all in the same day of him having the fist fight with Vince at the bodega, and then I think so. Okay, that's insane because that means he went back to Harry's, and uh-huh. I'm assuming it's at the absolute earliest. Mm-hmm. It's noon when he goes to eat at the sure. Yeah, unless he's ordering a breakfast tuna. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's just having that with coffee, dude. Between that and the Corona I'm drinking, I'm, you're gonna make me. <laughs> it's not gonna be good over here. Um, I have to understand that he had installed both of these cans of nas uh-huh. this laptop all this shit into his car before the race i guess that's nuts that's insane like again worst undercover cop at all where's uh the guy that works at brian oh he's working on his car what yeah he's doing stuff <laughs> yeah don't worry about it <laughs> one other aspect of this movie that i'm glad that they got rid of uh-huh. is the CGI of going into the car oh, and showing yeah, the combustion the, and everything. The fight club slash requiem Ooh, shots yeah. of Nas happening. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, it's not yeah. it's not good. The first one I don't mind. The one that the one that I hate is the one towards the end of the movie when yeah. the little explosion happens in, yes. in Dom's car. Yeah. It looks goofy as hell. Yeah, the first one you do you get it once. Yeah. You get it one time and it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just didn't need to do it. <laughs> I also like when this during this race when Brian hits the Nas uh-huh. and it, it kind of it almost looks like he's tripping because it does the stereotypical of like let's let the background like swirl and everything. Oh, and- sure, yeah. <laughs> you could do a good edit here of just cutting in the the black hole part of two thousand one, <laughs> like the the. 
<laughs> oh my god, it's full of stars. No. God, and then you just you overlay that over Paul Walker's face. <laughs> <laughs> my my favorite part of this race yes. is the end of the race when Ja Rule does go back to Monica. <laughs> no, Monica. She she has her line, which I'm not gonna repeat, but no. the response from the crowd, that feels like you could almost like juxtapose that with that scene in the fire festival doc when he's like we're not getting sued we got a bunch of geniuses in this room Mm -hmm. (laughs) and it's just the other guys going (laughs) oh oh yeah you can't come you can't come back to the street races anymore after that no you're you're done yeah you you are persona non grata after this (laughs) yeah yeah. you gotta get into another another uh vice another illegal activity i don't know man start making moonshine or something you can't come back to street races. my favorite thing after the race is that so Dominic Toretto is recognizable by the police on site. And well, I mean, he, look at him. Look yeah. at him. <laughs> so, but he puts on a leather jacket mm-hmm. and just walks by a cop car and is like, I'm probably fine. They don't know this jacket. Well, to be fair, this is some absolute profile. And he, he, you don't have him doing anything. Right. Nobody, there's no evidence he was there. Like, I get it. I, I mean, that's the whole point of the movie is... They all think it's Dom doing all this shit, but I'm like, that. Eh. Riddick is wanted throughout mm-hmm. several galaxies. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> okay. So when when Brian then rescues him uh, from the cop, uh-huh. he he mentions like. Oh, you know, like, uh, did you ever do time? Did you ever do jail time? He's like, ah, oh, not really. In like two years in juvie. Yeah. And he's like, well, what about blah, blah, blah. And he's like, yeah, uh, uh, you can find anything about anybody on the web. I'm like, yeah. Vin Diesel explains how the internet works. <laughs> yeah. And I was going to say, don't act like Vin Diesel knows how to u- even turn on a computer. Don't, don't patronize <laughs> me. This dude has couldn't even spell computer. My friend Alta Vista. <laughs> I asked my buddy Jeeves, and he told me <laughs> that he got locked up in Jeeves. I just got energy drink in my nose. <laughs> Any of that NOS energy in your nose? Yeah. No, I'm not touching that shit. Uh, Go too fast. I'm too furious. Also, I just realized that this movie is where the cycle ninjas from Righteous Gemstones come from. Oh, my boy. My boy. <laughs> Dude, snakeskin pants on a motorcycle yeah. is a bold choice. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> And in LA in the summer, dude, I know you I know you got some swamp ass going on. Dude. Absolutely. <laughs> this scene is loaded with sexual tension. Yes. Uh, you get ready to have your ass handed to you. You're gonna need more than that crotch rocket. And then the girl gripping his ass when he, he gets she gets on the back of the motorcycle. And one after he blows up the car to just come by and like kiss him on the cheek or mm-hmm. something. Like it just <laughs> come on, let's let's finish this. Well, not not even just sexual energy between Rick Yoon and Vin Diesel, but energy between Johnny Tran and his cousin Lance. <laughs> Sure. Lance always looks like a doe in, in headlights. Like he's just yes. like, oh yeah. <laughs> oh my god. There is a there is a shot of Lance holding a gun mm-hmm. that's like the, the the shot like from the from the barrel down. I know exactly what shot you're talking about. And he <laughs> looks scared that he is holding it. <laughs> like he thinks it's pointing towards him and he doesn't have his finger on it. It's so funny. <laughs> Also, when uh, <laughs> when Brian's car explodes, it's like David Lopan attacking in <laughs> Big Trouble in Little China. It's like that green flame that yeah. like, bellows out from the bottom. Yeah. I know. I, I like Rick Yoon a lot. I, I do, too. Johnny Tran, underutilized as a villain, but what a great name. Mm-hmm. What a great persona. Like, great actor there, too. Like, I mean, I know. Yeah, I like Rick Yoon a lot. Die Another Day is not a best example of his acting prowess, but <laughs> sure. I remember being like hurt too as a kid that this eclipse goes up yeah. because obviously it's a gaudy car now, but at the time, dude, that eclipse was like, holy shit, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. I kept finding myself being just shocked by the bright neon colors yeah. on everything. Okay, I, I was going to save this for the end, but I guess we can talk about this now since we're talking about mm-hmm. If you had to pick a car from this movie, <laughs> what car would you pick as like, that's now my car? Oh. And I, I get it. I mean, I get it. Before, before I even ask, that's 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 a loaded question. <laughs> oh no, it's it's actually really easy. I okay. want Dom's uh, Dodge Charger. Ooh. Like I, I mean, I'm not a car guy at all. Me and either. like the first time they open up that garage, I literally said out loud, "Fuck, that's a sexy car." Oh, I guessed. <laughs> It's so good. Even on the rewatch, I know it's coming. I will. Oh. Yeah, that's so good. <laughs> no, it's a beautiful car. I I will say, not a conventional choice, but I for some reason I've always liked that car. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jesse's Jetta. Oh sure, the white yeah. Jetta. Do you know who owns that car? <laughs> Frankie Muniz. I saw I saw that online. He bought it at, at an auction or something. I could take Frankie Muniz in a fight to win that car. Like- <laughs> well, and I, it was funny because like I, he. 
like Jesse's kind of a Frankie Muniz type. A little bit. It's just those kind of guys get that car. Yeah, I uh no, I I, I like that Jetta. Mm-hmm. I, I realize it's gaudy as hell, but I, I'm a sucker for a white car with white rims. Sure. I don't know why. I think it looks good. It's a it's a, it's a statement to drive a all white car to race wars. Oh my god. Good point. Very I didn't even think about that, but you're right. <laughs> so we go to this house party oh, and yeah. I like the fact that a 2001 Jordana Brewster has to pretend oh, like... Oh, you gotta get cleaned up. I know. Like, you have to do anything yeah. to look... You're you're Jordana Brewster in the 2000s. Uh-huh. You're, you're fine. Don't worry. Same with Michelle Rodriguez. Like, oh, yeah. all the women, for the most part, you're fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, she, she gets cleaned up real fast. And then we get a very strangely worded line from Brian where he goes, you got a bathroom here? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, no. No, we, we, we're one of those that don't. Yeah, I think the response is winner. Yeah, it's upstairs and to the left. Okay, is the downstairs one broken? Yeah. What, what, so who built funny. this house? I also love Letty's line of, you look a bit tired. You should go upstairs and give me a massage. Yeah. And then <laughs> Dean's be like, but on a water. I'm like, really? Are you really going to say no to a 2001, 2001 Michelle, Michelle Rodriguez? Rodriguez? <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing. Vin Diesel, uh, Dom, is a terrible boyfriend to Letty in this movie. 100%. Every scene, he's like, oh, where are the other girls here? Another girl is just run. The first time he gets out of the car at the first race, yeah. girls climb on to him when he gets to the house he's like what girls are here she's standing right there I like there's a couple of times where literally like the establishing shots for a new scene are him talking to women and yep. there's no dialogue yep. like and I'm just like what are you fucking and then at the end of the movie he's like I love you yeah I, and apparently they were really dating at this time too and I'm like oh, wow Michelle Rodriguez like you could you could dominate this man oh. just put the leash on him don't worry about it <laughs> but yeah no I, I thought it was so and like let's put it this way yeah at the end of the movie in the car race well not the car race the, the, the heist yeah. where she wrecks her car and flips a thousand times yeah if you if that was your girlfriend if you, if you let your girlfriend flip your car that many times you're probably breaking up but uh <laughs> and you told your friend hey you go check on her y- yeah do you think do you think you'd still be together after that? Absolutely not. <laughs> not but at all. They, their love transcends uh, but... amnesia plot lines. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and brainwashes. And yeah. I'm, I'm still not done with the Tales Party scene, by the way. Vince is playing two notes on this guitar uh-huh. to woo this girl. Like he's fucking Zach Wild, and he's just playing. <laughs> it's two notes. No, no, no. That's all he's playing. <laughs> he learned from Wes Borland. <laughs> <laughs> Even still, I get the power move here of. Uh, Dom going up into Vince and saying, hey, is this your beer? Yeah, it's my beer. And he gives it to Brian. Yeah. No fucking way. Even wiping the top off. Have no, you seen this guy? Uh, this guy that wears two tank tops? <laughs> one that's mesh? Yeah. I'm not drinking anything after that guy. No, yeah. thank you. Yeah, he's layered up. Yeah. And then, of course, the most famous line, I think, from this movie, you can have any brew you want as, as long as, as it's, it's a Corona. corona. So, so I can't have anything I want. Yeah. And, and then they share a Snapple. Yeah. <laughs> and they do. Oh, yeah. Lots of Snapple in this movie, he's too. Like, All right. I'll have a Snapple instead. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then Vince, too, for the for not for nothing, being like, he gives this, like, angry g- kind of growl almost about him taking his beer. I'm uh-huh. like, dude, just get another beer. Yeah. I, I know you feel emasculated in this moment, but it, it's a corona. Like, who cares? Just get another one. <laughs> yeah, go, go, they're twelve ninety five. Yeah. Uh, well, that's actually now, now with inflation, yeah, I would be kind of, I would be kind of upset. <laughs> like, man, I can't afford, I gotta take out a loan to get a fucking 12 pack. I was trying to figure out why I recognized Vince outside of this, and it's because he's in... In, um, he's in the first blade mm. and he's the guy who picks up the sword and his hand like explodes because yeah. it's got the failsafe yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't think Vince is that bad of an actor either, or at least not in this movie. No, I like him a lot in this. Yeah. He's an absolute shit heel and a big baby. Totally. Which will, there's a scene coming up here soon where, boy, you just put the babyfication on full blast. <sighs> so Vin Diesel, I mean, not Vin Diesel, Paul Walker gets pulled over by these cops. Mm-hmm. Some of the worst police work I've ever seen. Yep. This guy's supposed to be undercover you pull him over you arrest him not only that you make him ride all the way back to the stakeout in the handcuffs in the handcuffs yeah it's not until they get out that he's like these are really tight what an asshole what an absolute you fucking dummy and then they all start <laughs> speaking only in exposition yes like one of the lines that one of the lines that ted levine has is literally you are undercover mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then not, they're either doing exposition or they're doing shit that doesn't make sense. Like, mm-hmm. uh, so-and-so built this house for Elizabeth Taylor. Oh, I know. And we seized it. Yeah. Okay. Do you think this is because they Rob Cohen couldn't get like couldn't film in a police station? I couldn't figure out what why they were doing this, but it was cracking me up that 
for half a scene, I was convinced this was Dr. Mathis's house from Halloween Ends. Like, yeah. It looks like it when they're out on the porch. Oh, there's another weird thing, too. Let's all get iced uh, cappuccinos. Oh, yeah. I, I, what? I, what? Yeah, <laughs> a little argument about cappuccino. And then the insinuation that they have, the reason they have to make these arrests is because the truckers will take things into their own hands. Like, the tr- we don't need a trucker rebellion. I feel like this is a problem that solves itself. Uh-huh. Like, <laughs> Just, just let the truckers take. If it's that big a deal, and you're putting like this is a lot of man hours mm-hmm. and a lot of money going into this. Is it really worth it? If Brian doesn't show up at the end of this movie, that trucker takes care of Dom's gang. Yeah, like- Nick <laughs> is shot in the face with a shotgun. Uh-huh. Like you're good. Like I don't think they're robbing trucks anymore. You're fine. One, one scumbag is off the streets. Like mm-hmm. it's all good. But yeah, no, this is where we find out that, yes, Brian's undercover. The FBI is working with uh, the LAPD to try and bring this to to an end. They've stolen, <laughs> again, just an astronomical amount. Six <laughs> million dollars worth of VCR DVD TV combos. Uh-huh. Ted Levine's great in this. I yeah, love that. he's always great. Not even bothering with the comb over. Just oh, letting yeah. that, that, that mail. That hair is gone, brother. I like Tom Barry as Bilkins, too. Yeah. I, I mean, he's a, he's a great hard ass. They brought him back for the next one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's kind of been, I mean, he's been missing since then. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I like Ted Levine. I wish they would have done more with his character. Yeah, same. But, you know, it is what it is. Okay, this is the part we've all been wanting to talk about for the longest <laughs> time, but you gotta call this race competition something other than race wars. Race wars. You, you cannot call it that. Yeah. <laughs> and when we get to race war, okay, uh, never mind. We'll talk about that when we get there. But <laughs> so uh, we forgot to mention Brian races in the street race for his pink slip. He mm-hmm. loses it. The car blows up anyway. So he's like, I owe you a. Where they keep calling a 10 second car. Mm-hmm. He brings up this old junk Supra to, <laughs> to, for them to fix up. Which is when Jesse shows us this program mm-hmm. that uh, if you put in a floppy disk, you can change the colors on a car on the screen. And he's like, man, you should go to MIT. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You you push a floppy disk in and press play on a quick time. Mm-hmm. Boy, you're on MIT. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My, my favorite part, though, is that he shows him. He's like, this is what the car could look like when it's done. And it's just the car that looks like what it looks like when it's done. Right. It's <laughs> Exactly that, yeah. Uh, Ashley also pointed out that, like, Letty... Dom's not doing a lot of the work here. Nope. Letty's tank top is fucking filthy. His is pristine. Pristine white, not an ounce of smut. He's so sweaty, but his his tank top is gorgeously mm-hmm. white. No, I agree. And I like this little scene with Jesse and, and uh, Brian. Oh, it's... Yeah, it's good. I think the guy playing Jesse is so good. Yeah. One of my big beats with this movie is... It is an emotional weight when he gets killed at the end. Like, mm-hmm. I do feel bad, but I'm like, man, he is he's the best actor in the movie yeah. for their performance. Like, obviously, Ted Levine had a better career mm-hmm. and is probably a better actor in other things. But in this movie, I think the Jesse character gets the best performance. It's insane. Yeah. And he's had, like, a really great TV career. He mm-hmm. was in episodes of X-Files, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, he's, uh, like, a recurring character on Supernatural. Mm-hmm. Like, the dude's still working, and as he should be. Oh, yeah. He, he puts in the work. Mm-hmm. I will say... He was, uh, unfortunately, on uh, a part of the cast for the uh, ill-fated Midnight Rider movie from oh. uh, the early 2010s. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, I was in film school at the time that happened, and boy, they, that whole, right. just, if you're interested, re- uh, listener, just look up Midnight Rider, I think it was 2014, and just read up about that movie, and you will just get so angry. That, that's the one that, like, resulted in, like, involuntary manslaughter and yes. trespassing charges and all that stuff. Oh, my God. Filming on a train track without a permit, and <sighs> then a uh, crew member got, got murdered. Well, yeah. th- I mean, thankfully, not that actor's call, but yeah. geez, that's terrible. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It was ill faded that he was uh, he had yeah be part of that so absolutely well on a much lighter note i kind of want if we're doing spinoffs anyway mm-hmm. do a spinoff with a, a prequel of jesse and leon because i think their <laughs> chemistry as like the buddies yeah throughout the movie is so funny like when they first see paul walker and he's like oh he's beautiful and he goes i like his haircut <laughs> <laughs> i thought it was i thought they were fantastic together doesn't jess is it is it jesse who has the line where like because vince is gonna fight him and jesse says like maybe he's just sandwich crazy is it is it jesse that says that he said no, he said something and leon goes nah man he's not here for the tuna <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's pretty funny that's good i like i said i like leon and jesse i think those characters are pretty funny i um, also want to pitch vin diesel as the shape mm-hmm. dude the dude fills out a jumpsuit yeah i agree he does <laughs> and 
He's already, uh, he's got the blank expression on his face anyway, so Absolutely. why not? <laughs> the devil's eyes. <laughs> like a doll's eyes. So Vince leaves this cookout because he's pitching a fit that Brian's there. Uh-huh. Within, I want to say, mm, less than 90 seconds of screen time, he yes. turns right back around and comes back in. Yeah, and then comes, yeah. Like like with like with like his tail between his legs, he's like, I gotta eat. Right, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> this character is a shit heel. Uh. Well, yeah, because Vince also has that wild, like he's, he's, he reacts to seeing Brian helping with the dishes like, oh, that means you're a woman. You like, there's pussy. some wild <laughs> toxic masculinity in this scene. Yeah. But I feel like that could have been anything. Mm-hmm. He would have been like, he got up from the couch and like, do you guys want anything? Oh, uh, yeah, I, I want something all right. Yeah, why don't <laughs> like, you put on your apron? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I didn't know Vince was from, from the Bronx. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, the thing is, too, like, Mia pulls a, a oh, God, I love this part. Like, she's like, what's that little restaurant you wanted to take me to? Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Dude. Your balls, you might as well just take them out of your pants and put them on the table. You're done. And she turns to Brian and says, so you can take me there on Friday. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. And like, I like when, uh, I think it's Leon when he cuts back into the room because they're watching another Rob Cohen movie, the the Bruce Lee one. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, he's like, I think Leon goes, where's the popcorn? He goes, make your own goddamn <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. God, I've never seen such an alpha male get baited so fucking hard. It's so like, good. <laughs> it's so rewarding. It is because- like I, I like the performance, but the character is like it's hateable. Mm-hmm. Like it, you know, it's not up there with like uh, Professor Umbridge or something like that, where like you despise this character that much. Yeah. But this character sucks. Vince has some very specific ideas about certain types of people. Mm-hmm. He thinks only women can wash dishes mm-hmm. or cook, mm-hmm. and then he also when he. When he catches Brian snooping through the garage and, like, smacks him around, mm-hmm. he tells Dom he moans like a cop. Oh, I think he says moves like a cop. Oh, the subtitle said moans, no so I don't know if that way. was an accident or not. No fucking way. <laughs> Hold on. All right. Oh, I don't have the subtitles, damn Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, that's. I mean, that's what the subtitles on Amazon said, but... Uh, I'm almost a uh, thousand percent confident. It is not, it's, he moves like a cop, but okay, you know what? Okay, well, then, I, then I'm... Then I, you know what? I'm mad that i didn't earn my boner oh <laughs> uh, no you are it's a 2001 paul walker i mean he's it's a, still what i believe yeah he's still a good looking guy i'm gonna look up uh, uh the script just, I, I know it for a fact does not say mold that's just someone <laughs> on that's what the subtitle there's said. no fucking way there's no what because what is he talking about? he doesn't moan he moans like a cop or is he talking about because i hit him i pistol whipped him yeah i think that's i thought that's what he said because that's that's stupid if that's the case <laughs> Let me look it up. All right, hold on. Uh, read this. I know. I know this is a waste of time, listener. But let's just walk. Let's go down this hypothetical path anyway. Oh <laughs> man. Uh, read the screenplay. Here's a PDF. Oh my kid, banana. Oh my kid, banana. He moans like a cop. All right. Well, while we're while we're looking it up, mm-hmm. so Brian breaks into Hector's garages mm-hmm. to see if maybe they're the ones because we, we got to mention Hector comes in there and wants to buy three of everything, right, for a Civic, yeah, a Honda Civic, which is the car that's the been, car they're looking for. Yep. And, and it's so funny to me that like. Uh, almost immediately, Ted Levine is like, you know, you're letting your your love for Mia t- cloud your job. And I'm like, they've known each other for two days. But yeah. that is truly what happens is he has fallen in love with her. Uh, yeah, I know. But, well, that you got to do that, right? Like, it's it's a point break remake. I mean, people fall in love in that movie. Sure. Well. She, she's the Lori Petty of the crew. Absolutely. All right. I'm looking. Well, they've, they've sort of split Lori Petty into two characters, yeah. Mia and Letty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so I'm looking through the script here. We're at the scene. <laughs> uh-huh. The dialogue is different okay. um, from the writing, the written script. He says, I don't care if there's a dozen essays over there. I'll blow you in half. You fight dirty like a cop. Move it. Interesting. So, yeah. Brian, this is one of those times where you need to be very clear about what you say. Good, That's a good, good line. line. Good line. And, gr- and well delivered. Very well delivered. I think it's a good read. That's when he steps out of the shadows with the shotgun. And mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, it's a great shot. So good. No. Vince having, unsurprisingly, zero trigger discipline here. Finger right on that trigger. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's, do you think Vin Diesel, well, I guess probably not. I was going to say, do you think he knows that Brian's a cop? I don't think so. Yeah, because I, I think, because I think that that moment when Brian makes the call, it's so well played. Yeah. That there's no way he knew beforehand. That's fair. Because I was like, Vince keeps telling him, hey, he's a cop. And Brian is so obviously a cop. Uh-huh. But, um... No, I, I I do like this scene a lot. And yeah, that whole, you be very careful about what you say next. Mm-hmm. Very menacing. Yeah. It's very well done. He does step out of the shadows like the shape. <laughs> like, it's yeah. so well done. Yeah. It's a Riddick move. I mean, it really is. And then they they 
have the scene. This is the scene I don't understand. The interrogation. Yes. So first of all, oil torture. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. But how are they? How do they expect this guy to answer with a mouthful of oil? I, I know. They're still pouring it in. Lance also having no trigger discipline uh-huh. with the, his finger on the trigger. But here's what I don't understand. Okay. So we find out that you know because uh, uh, Brian finds all the DVD uh-huh. stuff in johnny train's garage we find out those were purchased legally yeah it's two different red herrings hector just wanted those parts yep and johnny tran just owned 40 dvd players for some reason yeah and johnny tran apparently still lives with his parents yeah or what well, does it live with his parents or do you think they're just having like like family maybe they were just visiting but i i like to believe that he's like this rich kid oh i would love that who like goes out at night with his gang yeah oh that would be even funnier yeah but okay, so here's the here's what I don't understand. Yeah, I think it's one of th- three things, and you tell me which makes the most sense to you. Sure. Or actually, how about this? You tell me what what is this scene? Sub- like, I don't understand the relationship between Ted and Johnny Tran. What happened with the engines? I don't understand what all is happening here. I have a hard time following that as well. Okay, like he just doesn't have engines in the cars that he ordered. So that's here's what I thought it was: was Tran. Just not able to get the engines he needed because Hector bought them? Maybe that's what it is. That might... Okay. Yeah. Or is it just taking too long for trans liking that he doesn't have his engines in time for race wars? Maybe. Or did someone steal them and this guy Ted was in on it and he knows about it? Oh, maybe. Is that why Is that why Vince and Dom are there to get the engines? I don't think they're there to get the engines. I think they're doing the same thing they were doing at Hector's Garage, which is let's just see what they're running yeah. so we can know for race wars. But or maybe it's just another like, hey, here's a reminder of why Johnny Tran is a bad guy. So you won't sure. feel too bad when Brian murders him cold blood at the end of the movie but i'm also like so what happened with the engine yeah <laughs> it's like it's a, I, I, that i am unclear on maybe maybe ted's like a fence and like that's well no because he says they purchased the shit legally yeah i have no I, I have watched this movie a dozen times i have no idea what this scene is about right yeah listener send in an email the several lines playlist at gmail.com and let me know what this scene is about and it's funny because <laughs> when you look through the the synopsis on wikipedia it doesn't even mention this torture sequence nope. i i went to wikipedia right after to see if this whole scene was talked about just yeah. so i could find out not nope. and it's just like they find the electronic goods and that's it yep so they, you know, Brian goes back to the FBI guy and mm-hmm. he's like, Brian says, we need hard evidence if we're going to go after Tran. Right. A- and you guys don't have it. And the FBI guy's like, well, we're doing it anyway. Right. I'm like, well, okay. And then they want to blame Brian because they jumped the gun. That made me so inf- enraged on this rewatch. I'm like, he's like, oh, well, guess what? Johnny Tran bought those legally. So it's your fault. I'm like, motherfucker. So you're, yeah, your career's over, asshole. I was like, motherfucker. <laughs> he told you it wasn't, he wasn't your guy. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Before the, the raid, though, they, they have this conversation in the garage where they show off the charger for the first time. And we get the incredible Hulk piano music. I, this monologue is so good, though. It's like, great. Vin Diesel sells it so well that it's not until he's done that you realize, I don't understand what your motivation is. Nope, nope. <laughs> like, he's like, I watched my dad die in a street race. No, 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 in a stock car race. Or, yes, that's right. And then yeah. uh, I watched my dad die in a race. And now that's why I love racing. Not for nothing. His dad went out the same way as Dale Earnhardt. <laughs> I so know. he's like Dale Earnhardt Jr. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Praise Dale, raise hell. Oh, uh, man. And uh, they show, and the FBI guy earlier shows the photos of what uh, Dom did did to the guy he says put his dad in the wall the yeah. mechanic yeah not for nothing that i know i keep saying that phrase but not for nothing that guy made out kind of well yeah you get beat by vin diesel with a wrench yeah and you just got some stitches <laughs> like pretty good yeah <laughs> pretty good on you <laughs> And that guy also kind of looked like John Cena in those photos. I don't know if you saw. I noticed. I thought that was yes. pretty ironic. <laughs> and what's so funny is there's a couple. I mean, there's a couple of times in this series when he will pick up a wrench and just like think about it, have like an existential. Yeah. Cri- he's like, I want to do it <laughs> oh, so my, bad. My kryptonite wrenches. <laughs> I also watched this. The direction was clearly look at Muse and then walk away. Mm -hmm. And he just, he does it with no intention in his face whatsoever. It's, I don't know. There's just, (laughs) there's a couple of scenes here where I'm just like, you're just walking this direction because you were told to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brian Walker pushes this other FBI guy down. He goes down with one shove. Mm -hmm. Just like, huh. No, the, the monologue, though, when he's like, the people there said that he died before the tanks blew and that it was me that was screaming. I'm oh, like, yeah. When, when did the lamb stop screaming, Toretto? That's <laughs> like, a good line, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody saw the silence of the lambs and then was like, you know what? We could also put Ted Levine in here if we're going to steal some of the dialogue. He died instantly <laughs> the next day. <laughs> 
<laughs> my fa- one of my favorite lines from that movie. <laughs> Man, if Vin Diesel would have had a photo of his dad with a circle around it and an arrow pointing, that's a dad. <laughs> have you? Uh, have I ever shown you a photo of my dead dad? <laughs> He's super dead. He's so dead. Uh, and then, yeah, we get another one of the other phrases that this franchise ran with, which is, I live my life a quarter, quarter mile, mile at a time. time. Yeah. And he sells it. Even though it's uh, it's so silly. It's a stupid line. It's a stupid line, but Vin Diesel can act yes. when he's given proper direction uh-huh. and he doesn't let his ego to his fucking head. Mm-hmm. Like he can act. It's it's the same way I feel about Liv Tyler. Like uh, sure. you cannot you can't watch the leftovers and even the Lord of the Rings movies and tell me she's a bad actress. Because no. she's not. Not at all. No. No, but there's human stakes in this movie. They're yes. not just like we gotta we gotta stop them from hacking this the spy satellite. Hack the <laughs> yeah. planet. Yeah. Hurry, we gotta drive on top of this submarine. Yep. Uh, we got to direct a torpedo back by hand to a submarine. What the fuck is even going on in that movie? Yeah. I didn't even see it, but what the fuck is going on in that movie? It's wild, man. It's so wild. So, so it's not they, good. They go to this restaurant, uh, Mia and Brian, yes. and she says, oh, uh, you know, uh, Dom lived uh, down the street from Letty, and Letty was always into cars, right. and so she had Dom's attention. And then she turned 16 and then whatever. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. oh, so you're just telling me Vin Diesel just got horny for Michelle Rodriguez. That's all yeah, you're saying. This is a long <laughs> like, monologue to explain that he's like, oh, she's got boobs. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Jordana Bruce is like, it's funny how that happens, isn't it? I'm like, not really. Yeah. That's just, <laughs> it's just genetics. Pretty, pretty much what happens. Yeah. 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 And then God, Brian's got he's got game up, up until this point where he says the only, he goes, "Oh, my brother pulled you in." No, the only thing that pulled me in was you. I'm yeah. like, God damn it, dude. Yeah, Ugh. and she sleeps with him. She it works. He, he's living in the auto parts store, and she still I sleeps know. with him. I know. I oh, know. Me, what a red flag! What a red. Flag. I was like, does he so undercover that he just has pictures of cars on his wall? Uh, but nope, no, he's sleeping in the garage. That means the garage is probably gonna have a shower too for him. Uh, to, to sh- oh my god! I hope. Oh my god, Mia. Even if he's not an undercover cop, Mia, that is a red flag. Better. girl. Yes, you can do so much. Jesse is right there, not for nothing. Like- Mia, you got a two-story house and three businesses in Los Angeles. Yes. You guys are you guys are doing so fucking well. You, you can up your you can up your standards for sure. Oh, man, Brian Walker, I, Brian Walker, Paul Walker. I didn't realize had these baby blue eyes. Oh, Jesus, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh my God, husky eyes. Oof. Well, that would explain why he's in that movie with the huskies. Then. <laughs> <laughs> So they they fix up the Supra mm-hmm. and man or actually before that I forgot the raid let's talk about the raid oh, on the with house. this like Marilyn Manson montage I'm so glad you brought this up I was gonna say go to my head if you would ask me uh, before I looked it up who made the song I'd be like, oh Marilyn Manson is it no. not oh it's no it's by a band called Dope oh okay D O P E yes and I I know it's it's fucking fart rock I still fart think it's pretty rock. good. Yeah. It fucks in the scene, dude. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, that's how I feel when I watch Punisher Warzone and oh those rock zombie and slipknot needle yes. drops happen. I'm just like, yeah, 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 I like this. Yeah. Uh, this this is in my wheelhouse. Early 2000s, uh-huh. new metal. Sure. For your score. Yeah, it's working for me. Yeah. Freddy versus Jason all over again. Oh, my God. Well, at least this, this, this movie got bands I've heard of to put their <laughs> sure. music in. You mean that there weren't any spine shank songs in this uh, one? Not that I'm aware of. I can go back and look at the, sc- at the score, but I I don't think so. Um, so, a couple of questions about this this raid on Trans House. Uh-huh. Number one, why is Brian a, be a, allowed to be a part of it? Right. Why why risk that? <laughs> Number two, they get ready on a rooftop and then go somewhere else. They get ready on a rooftop and then go to a cul de sac. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> they decide for some reason that. They're going to intercut that with Vin Diesel and Michelle Rodriguez. This awkward sex scene. Yeah. I mean, it's, I guess it's supposed to be something for the ladies. Like the shot where he motorboats her. Well, he, yes, he, mot- <laughs> I wrote that down. He motorboats her, but he also like, he like curls his fingers oh, under oh, her ass oh, and then lifts oh. her up. It's really oh. disconcerting the way it happens. My spine, uh, just electricity shot up my spine. He's doing the over the top move, like yes. when Stallone like curls his fingers. He's flexing around. his he's flexing his fingers like he's, It's so weird. It's so weird. It's a Mike Myers move. <laughs> like I, 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 there's some credence to your theory that he's the shape uh-huh. in, like in these movies. Yeah. It's also a Mike Myers move in that Austin Powers would have done that. Yep, yep. <laughs> so they they first get Lance at this restaurant, and uh-huh. man, the one handed choke slam 
that this F- I don't know if you saw it, but the SWAT guy, because Lance tries to run out the restaurant. No, I missed that. The SWAT guy just grabs one hand on his neck, and that's what clotheslines him. Whoa. And I was like, man. <laughs> well, well I'll, I'll pull it up here in a second, but we got to see that shit. Holy. It, it makes me laugh every time. This dude just gets manhandled. That's so weird. And then, man, the dad backhanding uh, Johnny Tran for- Oh, yeah. That's good. Oh, it's really good. I f- and then they put some reverb on that thing. Here, uh, uh, that- here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Oh. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> you guys got to stop wearing leather pants in the garage. The butt lift. It's so good. You got to stop. It's so good. Oh. oh, yeah. There's oil everywhere. She is dirty in like leather pants and a tank top. Oh, there's the motorboating. Got to have that Bless. in there. Good for them. Bull. <laughs> Can't you just feel the love right there? Uh huh. But yeah, before we get to the next scene, I I kind of want to. I mean, we got we're watching the raid right now. Here, just watch this choke can that's about to come. Okay, just watch his neck. Boom! Oh <laughs> shit! Wow! He kicks his feet out from under him too, man. Oh, more. Oh, he didn't even trigger discipline then, putting the gun in his face. Oh, Jesus. Man. Yeah. Do you think uh, Johnny Tran bought all of these this like TV uh, DVD combo things just for Christmas gifts? Yeah. Like, look at all the people in this family. There was he was at the end of this dinner. He was gonna tell everyone like, look under your chairs. Oh wait, wait, come outside. I got a truck that I want to show you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, you could tell that's Paul Walker with the baby blue eyes. Uh-huh. Why would they risk this? Why does he need to be there? The next thing we get is this fully unnecessary Ferrari race. Yeah, where the guy pulls up next to them. Can I tell you what I kind of wish uh, th- this would have turned into? Like, uh-huh. what if the Ferrari guy and his girl, and then Dom and Brian just did the same scene from Dude Where's My Car <laughs> with Fabio? I don't remember that at all. So uh, the, the dude Where's my car. They have a sports car. They pull up to a red light. Uh-huh. Fabio's there with a the girl. Uh-huh. He he kisses her on the cheek as like a flex. And then Ashley Kutcher kisses, kisses Sean William Scott on the cheek. <laughs> And then Fabio <laughs> starts making out with the girl, and then they're like, huh, and then they start making out. I don't remember this at all. Wow, I have Dude, purged that movie from my brain. It's a terrible movie, but that scene does make me laugh. I'm like, <laughs> I, that's all I can think about watching this scene. Yeah. I'm like, man, that would have been really good to see Paul Walker <laughs> And then they look over, and there's Chevy Chase from the vacation movies. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh this Supra is gorgeous. Yeah. I, I don't like the color, but I mean, you it, it screams douchebag, but man, yeah. honestly, a Supra in that good a condition. Oh, yeah. It's it's a beautiful vehicle. Like, yeah, absolutely. Sorry. It just is great. Yeah, we get the saliva needle drop, uh-huh. which was like all over the trailers and TV spots for this movie. Uh-huh. Either that click, click, boom song or this song. <laughs> sure. It, it was all over that place. Man. So they go to this restaurant on the beach and- Brian says, I want in. I want into whatever you've got. Mm-hmm. Whatever crime you're doing, I want a crime as well. And luckily, Dom has the directions to Race Wars okay. in his shirt pocket. <laughs> this is, this is I, I never noticed this until this watch. This is the dumbest shit. So he's first of all, he's just now giving Brian directions to race wars. Where uh-huh. the hell were they going before that? Just to just to have some shrimp on the beach. Oh, and luckily we're going in the right direction. We could also continue going to race wars. Uh-huh. But also, he treats the location like it's some sort of secret. Motherfucker, this shit is at an airbase and has sponsors. It's like Burning Man. Like yes! <laughs> this is fucking uh um, 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 uh Woodstock. Yeah. This is fucking Woodstock for cars. Like, for sure. <laughs> so stupid they like this is like oh this is like the big underground meetup right i'm pretty sure like you know uh, frank's hot dog there's a fazoli's in the background yeah. <laughs> you god you could not have picked a better fucking of the era <laughs> chain to put there oh that's perfect yeah no it was so funny because they yeah they, they they're they're acting like they're going to like the Mortal Kombat tournament. Yeah. And, 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 but it's, it's literally just like a sponsored corporate event. God. And we get a race and a half at Race Wars before they leave. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it has nothing to do with the movie other than Johnny Tran gets angrier at it. Yeah. It's the same as, uh, the, fir- the, the Paul W. S. Anderson Mortal Kombat, uh-huh. where it's like, uh, I guess these two people are racing now. No, there's no bracket, nothing. It's just, we see two races. Michelle Rodriguez racing this J. Cole looking guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And I love, I don't know if you noticed this, but on, you know, everybody has like their NOS buttons in very specific places. Uh huh. She's got hers on her steering wheel. And on I love the that, steering wheel. Yeah. I love that she has to put little labels that say NOS as if they could be anything else. <laughs> sure. Like, <laughs> this is my apple juice button I hit right there. Like, what else would it fucking be? And then an- another thing that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me is how does Jesse not know or recognize who Johnny Tran is? Right. Like, 
He would know what that guy looks like and know not to fuck with him. And also, Jesse feels confident that his Jetta is going to outrun a Honda 2000. But I feel like that you got to have a bigger separation there in terms of vehicles. Yeah. Because like, yes, we we end up knowing that he put a hundred grand or whatever into this Honda 2000. But I'm like, this would be the same as if Jesse was like, this fool is running a minivan against my Jetta. Maybe. Right. I can understand your confidence there. But, but yeah, he, he, he seems fully oblivious to the fact that he is fully fucked up. Yeah. I don't get it. Also, I got to point out something that is driving me insane because uh, we've got this playing. The restaurant they're at is Neptune's Net. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just Googled it. It is the restaurant that that Lori Petty works at in Point Break. Of course. It's the exact same place. It's the same shot, too, with them pulling into the parking lot. It's the same shot. Infuriating. (laughs) Fast and infuriating. I would honestly go to this restaurant because I would love to eat some shrimp right now on on the the beach. That does sound great. It sounds delicious. Yeah. So yeah, we go to Race Wars. It's on this fucking air. I mean, Woodstock was at an air base. <laughs> yeah, we go to Race Wars. Oh, we go to Race Wars. It's, a pro- it's nothing like what we thought it was going to be. There's cars involved. <laughs> Um, God, you got to call it something else, man. I know. <laughs> oh, shit. I never put this there. Hector is apparently there because that, isn't that his car? I think so. Yeah. yeah Hector kind of vanishes from the movie. Yeah. He's literally just there as a red herring. Mm-hmm. There's a wet t shirt contest and a bunch of creeps around. <laughs> yeah. It's terrible. Oh, yeah, look, Vin Diesel talking to yet another girl that is not Michelle Rodriguez. <laughs> yeah, as, just as an establishing shot, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, look, there's so many spots. There's security details. Th- this shit would not be a secret. Uh-huh. Like, this is so, it's so stupid that they play it like that. They also, by the way, there is now, a, like, an event based on the ones in the movie. Yes. And they're still calling it Race Wars, and that's just fine. I saw that when I looked it up. I didn't <laughs> see that. But yeah, this guy, Michelle Rodriguez, races definitely looks like J. Cole. <laughs> yeah. Like, just a scummy J. Cole. So, here's the thing. Jesse loses this race, uh-huh. and he put it's his dad's Jetta that he put up against, and he 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 skips town, very ballsy. Uh huh. The Vin Diesel punch that he throws against Johnny Tran, I feel the weight of that shit. Like, oh yeah, he's not huge in this movie, but man, that punch, I, oh, the, Johnny uh, Rick Yoon sells that punch. Yeah, he does. really good. How does Vin Diesel not keep getting like like he gets banned from the he says oh I'm banned from stock car racing whatever you got to be banned from race wars for this shit too this dude is just a loose cannon for beating the shit out of a guy yeah, yeah. a guy who won his race fair and square yeah I mean, he just gets to leave it, yeah just gets to go and, no because he's still there because we cut to it's nighttime now and he's yeah. still there that's right yeah, yeah yeah so this is also where this movie the whole point of this franchise is what one word right family, family. this whole scene right here afterwards mm-hmm. completely undermines that because instead of going and finding jesse which almost feels like an afterthought when they bring it up later uh-huh he's like well let, let's we gotta go do another heist we gotta <laughs> yeah why why do you have to do it tonight right now yeah. we have to yeah it's so stupid like honestly, when when he gets back from the heist and he goes to get his shotgun and Brian pulls up and pulls a gun out on him, uh-huh. and he goes, "I gotta go find Jesse." I I go every time, I'm like, "Oh, that's right, Jesse is out of the movie." <laughs> Jesse's just fucking around somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I do enjoy uh, how much Mia feels betrayed when she hears Brian call in the trace on Dom's cell phone number. Like, yeah, yeah. He goes, "Well, what's what's the number?" And she just kind of just hesitates. I feel like that's really good. That's really good. I, what's weird is the scene where he like tells her, "I'm a cop." Mm-hmm. There's house music play, playing at all <laughs> points during this, but then there's also score <laughs> under that. Yes. So there's yes. like five different soundtracks competing at the same yes. time in this one scene. I don't know what I'm supposed to feel. I don't right. know what I'm supposed to be. Also, it, I, th- I feel like the last half of this movie just feels like a good time. Like, yeah. you go to a, a restaurant on the beach, get some fried shrimp <laughs> and some oysters. Go watch a race. You go watch some races, some some, some uh, drag races. And then you go on a night ride in the desert mm-hmm. where you're just flooring it in this super. This sounds like a fun time, dude. Yeah. Like, not for nothing. Like, it's scummy, you know, street racers culture, scumbags. But, like, it just feels like it would be, this would be the fun part of it. And the the this last chase, or this, not the last chase sequence, but this heist is good. It it's is really well good. made. It's really well made. And also, it. They, they apparently were racing all night to get to this truck because it's broad daylight now. Uh-huh. And it's like midnight when they retrieve their vehicles. But so I don't know. There, there's a there's one moment when Brian is like, uh, uh, we're only 40 miles away from them. Yeah. And I was like, what do you mean only? Like, that's a fucking hour and a half or whatever. Like, what are you well, talking about? I mean, his Supra, that should only take like 20 minutes that's if he's speeding. That's true. That's true. Yeah. 
I mean, going the speed limit, sure. If you're going under 60, it'd probably take a little bit longer than that. But also, like, it defeats the whole purpose of these black civics if you're in broad daylight and uh-huh. you're not wearing your fucking motorcycle gear to cover up your, your faces and whatnot. Right, exactly. And it's they only do that so that they can show you who's who when this big action scene happens. Uh-huh. So that, I don't know, it, it, it doesn't work in the, like, the logical aspects. Logical sense. Yes. Yeah. In terms of spectacle, man, it's just, it's well shot. It's all, it's, there's so much great practical work here. Mm-hmm. The stunt, the stunt work. The stunts are insane. Like, when, when Vince is on the front of the truck, yeah. and then he slams on the brake, and he whips around to the side, uh, that is a good practical stunt. My stomach dropped. I was yeah. like, holy shit, like, this is the best part of the movie. I felt that shit in my ribs. Yeah. It's also a good thing no one else is on this highway when this heist happens. This is, <laughs> right. a, this is clear to go. My favorite part of the plan is when Letty says, I'm going to pull up beside him to distract him. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, I know it's a third car. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck? What's the plan? You must be reading my notes because my literally my next note was she says she's going to pull up to distract him and then gets mad when it works and he shoots her window out. Uh-huh. <laughs> wow. The the wire work wrapping around his arm, Ugh. good, good. Uh, it's it's a good stunt, man. It's nasty, yeah. I also love Leon being like, "Get him off of there!" And I was like, "Fucking how, Leon? What, what do you? It also, what do you think we're fucking doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I it's it's a good it's a good stunt and it's good work. Like this this trucker has murder on the brain. This dude is he has like so many bullets. He's taking no prisoners no. with this shotgun. <laughs> he's fucking Ash Williams in that truck and. We never see the trucker's face. I no. feel like missed opportunity to make that a cameo. Except for like when he passes out like halfway through the fight. Yeah. Missed opportunity. I feel like that should have been like, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, Bruce Campbell with the shotgun. Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Missed opportunity. But yeah, I, this is uh, a, a, a fantastic stunt. And then, uh-huh. yeah, they, they uh, uh, Letty does the going under the, the bed of the truck thing again. Yeah. Uh, she flips her car. Oof. Leon picks her up. Paul Walker pulls up with the Supra to help out. Good stunt work here. He jumps on the car, on the truck, uh, and ties him, jumps back on. Seems to jump faster than the bullets travel yeah. because it, it, like, the guy shoots him at point blank range and he just kind of jumps off and yep. somehow the bullets don't yep. get him in time. Yeah. There's also the tiny, tiny little window in the door at yeah, the bottom of the yeah. door that he almost shoots uh, Vince through. Mm-hmm. But no, yeah, I, I have no th- nothing but praises to say about this final heist. I think it's really well done. It's it's really good. And it and it, it makes sense that like Fast and Furious was kind of seen as like a, a return to form mm-hmm. and like most of the set pieces are like, let's do that last bit from Fast and the Furious, but bigger. Yeah. And it like and it works. It works for me. Um for you. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying, again, not saying it's good, but it's entertaining as hell. Sure, sure, sure. Is it the sixth one where they're on an impossibly long runway? Yes. On a plane? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, Brian rescues Vince. Uh, everybody pulls up and, you know, Vince is bleeding out. He's been shot. He's got this wire wrapped around his arm still. Terrible cop, but Brian is a good guy. Yeah. Like, he knows he can be killed right here by this giant man. That could snap his neck like a twig, but he, and to a guy that honestly does not deserve to be saved. Yeah. If we're being, I mean, you jumped on that thing willingly and guess what? You, this is the repercussions you take. And Vince has also tried to kill him at least once. Yes. He's pointed a shotgun in your face and had his finger on the trigger the whole time. Uh huh. One slip and it's done. No, I, I do like the shot. Yeah. The reveal that, that, uh, Vin Diesel has where he notices, well, well he doesn't notice. He hears Brian calling in. The, this is Officer Brian O'Connor. Yeah. Ooh. The, the look he gives. It's the, really good. He, he's got a lip quiver, the betrayal, the anger, but like, I can't, I gotta let this guy do it. You see him realize that Vince was right. Yep. Like, he kind of looks down at Vince again and looks back up at Brian. Mm-hmm. It's really well played. Yeah. You get, you get a lot for a little there because, mm-hmm. like, you know, the, the line there would be, we'll deal with this later yeah. but he says all that with his fucking the look like totally again i i wish vin diesel would not have gone the way of the rock and all these other <laughs> sure. people that are genuinely they can be good actors yeah and they just fucking let their ego go to their head it's unfortunate absolutely like what is he going to do when these fast and furious movies are over because groot's going to be done with soon too yeah. like what is he going to do i'm sorry does it infuriate you that he's Groot like I don't know what it is about it but it like it's the weirdest thing in the world to me that he's Groot I think it's weird that he's a part of the MCU and gets paid buku bucks to say a line that anyone could say say a line and just do your 
uh, Iron Giant. Uh, you're doing that again. Sure, sure. Like, that's all you're doing. Yeah, it's just so strange. So, yeah, Vince gets rescued by the helicopter, and Dom goes back home. He gets uh, a shotgun. He gets his into his charger, which he says he's never driven before. This shot of him coming out of the, the garage with Ooh. blood all over his shirt, shotgun in hand, it's, it's intimidating as hell. It's good. Yeah. It's good. And not, I, I'm going to say something blasphemous here, but mm. the tension here between these two works so much better to me than when uh, Keanu Reeves confronts Patrick Swayze in Point Blank. Oh, I mean, I don't know. I'm don't sorry. Know about that. I'm going to do it. I, well, I got to say, though, I, I mean, the, the, the common denominator here is that I think Keanu Reeves is bad in Point Break. <laughs> well, so. I was going to say I buy the friendship that blossoms between these two leads more so than I buy the Keanu Reeves and Patrick Swayze, Swayze one. I can see that. I Yeah. So, yeah, Jesse shows back up and uh, Vin Diesel gets spider sense. Oh, yeah, we get, we get <laughs> dumb vision. Yeah. When everything <laughs> slows down and yeah. it shoots over to Dom's like spidey sense. You know, another reason why this movie works for me is it understands its roots mm-hmm. and pays homage to that because what what's the weapon of choice here? Fucking Uzis, yeah. which was the weapon of the 80s for a bad guy. And man, we got to get back to that. Mm-hmm. We got to get back to Uzis. Uh, anything else? I'd, you're not as good a villain. Like you plus one for villains if they're using Uzis. Absolutely. And man, uh, I it gets me every time. I I feel for Jesse going and Jordana Brewster screaming at at uh, Vin Diesel not to go. Mm-hmm. It's it's good. It's good stuff. I know, I know these movies are oh, like. I mean the 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 rage in Dom's face yeah. when he's like kneeling over Jesse's body is it's great. And then the final shot of the movie we get of Jordana Brewster. Yeah, just kind of helpless. Yeah, it's it's really fucking good. There is a there is an alternate ending to this movie where you get a, one more scene with her. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. Like she's like packing to leave town or whatever, and like it was it's a little bit more of a, a clean ending with Brian coming back and being like, "Hey, I'm not a cop anymore. We can be together." And I, gotcha. I it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, I, I, the way this movie ends now, it's pretty it's good. Pretty great. Also, I don't need. I can't tell exact. I'm. Um, we're watching the final chase here with uh, Brian and Lance and Johnny Tran. Yeah, I can't tell specifically where this is. I mean, it looks like it's up near the Hollywood Hills, mm-hmm. but it can't be because it's like not that well of a neighborhood. And, and also, luckily, again, there's no one else on the road. I know. No, and I mean, I could have used like a dog walker getting blasted by one of these Uzi shots <laughs> or something. Like, just something. Some kind of yeah. collateral damage. But like Someone's latte exploding. Uh, Ted Levine's walking with one of his iced cappuccinos and the glass <laughs> bottom explodes out. My drink. Oh, no. My special drink. Oh, it was a great big fat uh, iced cappuccino, too. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, the blurred shots here during the final drag race uh-huh. do not work for me. Like, when it slows down. No, not, not as well. Yeah. And also, this is so... This is the most apparent that it's a point break remake of like i gotta go catch one more wave and yeah i gotta do one more drag race i i will say when he when they clear the train Mm -hmm. and you know dumb spins out flips the car over and sir like when he says that didn't play out how i expected or whatever like it's funny (laughs) that's it but it's a loaded line because he is fully almost trying to commit suicide in this scene like it's it i mean it is it's the bodie and point break thing like i i I just, I think that's a really smart line. Yeah, it's really good. I, I, I have nothing but positive things to say for the most part about this ending, except again, I, these, these slow down, weird, <laughs> sure, uh, motion blur shots. It's just, it's just weird. Yeah, they're a little funky. Yeah. Uh, but no, the car flip is great, great stunts. And again, this is how you do like cars in these movies with, and it not be a fucking joke. Like uh-huh. in that one movie where they're jumping a car from a Scott, one skyscraper to another. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah. What are we doing? Well, especially because when they do it in that movie, it's been like 10 years since the transporter did it better. <sighs> and it's just like, Think about where your franchise has started. Like, uh-huh. they're stealing VCRs and DVD players, mm-hmm. and now they're jumping a car. It's so fucking dumb. Well, uh, Adam Scott put it best when How Did This Get Made covered Fast Six, and he's just like, they're influencing world events mm-hmm. now. <laughs> like, they're they're being brought into rooms with government officials. <laughs> I don't know, man. It, it's disappointing because I think they, they struggle to make cars a parent in those movies uh-huh. like they have to like they don't need cars anymore you might as well give them fucking jetpacks at this point well and they and they struggle to make the make that a focal point still yeah. because like in fear in fast five like the rock has a line where he says don't let any of them get behind the wheel of a car so <laughs> stupid such a stupid line <laughs> uh 
It's like, don't give Michael Myers a butcher knife. Just don't fucking Stay do it. Stay the fuck out of my way. <laughs> Um, and yeah, this, so as a recap to the end, yeah. they go after Johnny Tran and Lance. They definitely kill Johnny Tran. Lance, <laughs> not dead. Yeah. And for some reason, doesn't come back in this franchise. Uh, it's the exact same ending as Point Break, yeah, where uh, instead of having one one final surf, uh, he's got one final drag race. Uh, he wrecks his car. The cops come in. Paul Walker gives him the keys to the Supra and lets him go. And then approaches the off-camera police and we just cut to black Mm -hmm. i think it works really well it's a good ending yeah i like it a lot and if this was the only movie in this franchise i feel like this movie gets a lot more respect yeah totally because i think these movies now as people see them like you can kind of almost skip the first four and like five is like this is what the franchise is now Uh you know what i mean yeah and I don't know. I think this is a solid movie for what it is. It's definitely of its time, but I think it does what it's doing pretty well. Like for being a point break remake, mm-hmm. it does it better than the actual point break remake. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. It takes you the source material in very smart ways and really, really does it well. Yeah, I totally agree. We do get the uh, the post credit scene, which I'm not even going to really bother to talk about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, which is just Dom driving in Mexico. Yeah, he, he got away. So, but if you think about the implications of it, like the last thing Jordana Brewster saw is like, you know, Jesse gets gunned down in front of her. Yeah. Vin Diesel goes after him in her bloody rage and she doesn't see him again if you take just this movie. Same with Letty, his girlfriend. And yeah, if this is if this is a standalone movie. Yeah. And you you don't know if Vint survived. Like a lot of lot of implications here. But yeah, the, the, the one bad part about this ending, though, cut to directed by Rob Cohen card yeah. and Ja Rule screaming, it's murder. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not good. Not, not a, yeah. <laughs> it is definitely a stamp in time, isn't it? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So yeah, that's that's the Fast and Furious. Is there any other notes that we forgot to cover before we get into? Uh, holy shit, the music supervisor from this movie was called Happy Walter. <laughs> <laughs> holy shit. Did you see that? I you missed that. <laughs> Uh, any other notes we forgot to cover of yours before we get into the the wrap up stuff here? No, I, 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 we actually, I feel like we took the same notes through a lot of this movie, I, uh, and I think we covered the movie in about as much time as the movie's runtime is. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah. All right. Well, why don't we get into uh, a segment that I feel like we're really going to enjoy here? Let's get into prop cop. And uh, for new listeners, Prop Cop is where we look at all of the props in the movie The Fast and Furious, and we decide which ones we want to keep for ourselves. Yeah. So, real quick, there's that credit. Music supervisors, Happy Walters. Gary Jones and Happy Walters. (laughs) Great name. Nathan, what prop do you want from The Fast and the Furious? Uh, I really liked the the signage on top of the garage that Brian works at. The mm-hmm. big car coming over the side yeah. of the building. Uh, yeah, that's pretty <laughs> I cool. I want that on top of my house. That's pretty cool. I kind of want the grapple gun that they use to take the windshields out of the, the big rigs. Yeah, that's good. It's it's a simple little prop, but it, I think that's pretty cool just to have. Totally. All right. Well, we got some more little segments here. One of my favorites, uh, Bit Part. Yeah. And it's where we look at... All of the extras uh, in the movie, <laughs> yes, uh, preferably no named characters, and if you have a line, it's just one. But uh, we we recast that person, that actor, that character as ourselves, <laughs> and boy, our filmography at this point is it's pretty great. It's intense. We are some impressive. of the most impressive character actors of all time at this point, Nathan. Uh huh. But I'll go ahead and tell you what I would like to be. Yeah. I want to be the SWAT guy who one hand choke slams Lance in the <laughs> restaurant. Really good. That shit's yeah. so fucking funny. <laughs> I totally. <laughs> miss that that's great uh what about you uh i have two. Oh, um, okay one is there's a chubby asian kid with glow sticks at the rave yes, during the, and I, I know you're talking about <laughs> when the camera like smashed cut to him ashley and i gasped yeah. like audibly and i was just like oh my god he, he might as well be wearing one of those cat in the hat hats yes. that people wore all the time yeah, <laughs> yeah. yep yep and then uh, my second would be the security guy when they first arrive who says what's up man welcome to race wars oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah also you know it'd be cool he doesn't have any lines but the guy that initiates the races at race wars takes his job so seriously oh his little crouch yeah he like turns around and pivots and yeah it's really good he waits for the cars to fully pass him and then 180s whips his head around to watch Does, like a little spider-man pose. yeah yeah, yeah. that's good <laughs> that's good okay Let's get into the reason for the season, the whole reason we're here. And uh-huh. we should mention, we didn't even mention this, the whole reason we're doing this movie 
on this day is because this is Thanksgiving week, and this movie is all about family. All about family. All about family. So why don't we talk maybe about some family stuff here uh-huh. when we get into Silver Linings. All right, so what do you got? I think at the end of the day, Dom and Brian's friendship survived this movie. It sure did. You know, I, I like they're 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 not on bad terms. He gets him he gets away at the end and, you know, they're still brothers. Yeah. Well, um Mally's not here, so I have a feeling I know what his would be. Uh-huh. And I, I don't want to put words in his mouth. Sure, sure. This just feels like a Mally answer, which is uh Jesse doesn't have to give Tran his car anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That is good. But mine is, uh, technically, Brian solved the case. He did. He did. And (laughs) it kind of feels... Mm, well, I was going to say, if he didn't kill Jesse, Johnny Tran would kind of be vin- vindicated in this movie because he, like, he purchased his shit legally. Mm-hmm. He won that street race legally. That's true. <laughs> but uh, yeah, both him and Lance are also off the streets, it seems. So there's some good news there. Nobody's getting oil tortured anymore. <laughs> right. uh, yeah. Well, let's say this. We always like to end this, uh, our episodes with a double feature, a movie you pair with The Fast and Furious if the ending left you cold or upset mm. or dour, uh, something to balance things out, uh, typically with a connection of some sort. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'll go ahead and tell you mine. Sure. I think you should watch a movie we've already talked about on this episode. I think you should watch The Faculty yeah. to get more Jordana Brewster because uh, Roger Ebert obviously saw something in her since he listed her first <laughs> in his review. Right. But I think she's really good in that movie. I think she's good in this movie and honestly underutilized in those other movies too totally i think she's one of the better parts uh unfortunately of this franchise uh, i agree so what do you got uh i would say l- look i don't think that my recommendation is a good movie by any stretch of the imagination mm-hmm. but if you want to just see how ridiculous it gets from here just jump straight to the fast and furious presents hobbs and shaw uh, haven't seen that one either it is uh it's bad yep. but man it is it's non-stop what the hell am i watching yep. and i think it's uh i i just the con- the contrast there is fascinating to me fair enough I thought about this the other night, too, uh-huh. because my other pick-me-up is going to be Saving Private Ryan to get more Vin Diesel. Oh, sure. Is that a movie we could do on the show? I, you know what? I don't know. I, I, had, I had to think, I was thinking about it. I'm like, yeah, but everybody died protecting Matt Damon. So sure. Like, sure. Was it worth it? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll think about it, because that's, for my money, my favorite Spielberg movie. So, Sorry. I know that there's a lot of audible gas in the audiences right now. <laughs> no, but. it's good. It's a good movie. I, I don't think I don't think you're like too far off if you say that's one of your faves. All right. I know it's like oh, an outlier between that and Schindler's List. People are like, what? Uh-huh. But, well, do you recommend this movie? I yeah, I'd say it's a fun time. It's it's an it's also like an inoffensive fun time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I think this was like I put this on on a Saturday afternoon uh, with a with a cocktail and just had a grand old time. Mm, okay, okay. Um, yeah, I I recommend this one and only this one. <laughs> Sure. I think it's an, a fairly well-made movie for the time. Mm-hmm. Like, I know it's deeply rooted in scumbag culture, uh-huh. and it exudes that. But I think it, the cast has good chemistry. Mm-hmm. I think Vin Diesel hasn't let uh, himself ruin these movies with his massive ego. I think there's some great characters in this movie, and character actors as well. And I think it's a worthy remake of Point Break. Yeah. I mean, it's no Catherine Bigelow directing this movie, for sure. Right. But it is... Like I said, it does it better than the actual remake of Point Break. So totally, yeah. I I still love this movie. I, I could do without the rest, and that's that's all I got to say. If you enjoy these movies, I am so happy for you. Mm-hmm. I just just be honest with yourself and just know that just just tell me they're not good movies. They're silly. Yeah, they're silly. They're they're a dumb fun time, and uh-huh. that's okay. But they are not anybody that's seriously like we got to put these up for Oscars. It's uh-huh. the same with those MCU movies. Like, uh, let's get these nominated. Sit down, sit down, <laughs> please sit down. I, right. As Nathan has once said, I implore you to watch literally any other movie. Mm-hmm. So. All right. Well, that's the Fast and Furious from 2001. Uh, if you want more of the Silver Linings playlist, you can check us out on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, where we post pretty much every day. Mm-hmm. You can also check us out on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash Silver Linings playlist. Uh, you can subscribe if you haven't already. We would really, really appreciate that. And the best thing you could do is tell your friends and family about the show. 
And yeah, if you wanted to let us know your thoughts on The Fast and the Furious, or if you want to just scream at me and tell me how I'm wrong, and <laughs> these other movies are are the you know the Citizen Kane's, the Jaws's, cinema, the Casablancas of <laughs> modern cinema, you can do so by either DM- DMing us on Instagram or Twitter, or mm-hmm. you can email us at the Silver Linus Playlist at gmail.com. Now, this was my pick for this week. Next week is Mally's pick. And as a running trend, uh, he is not here to give his clue, but um, maybe if we, you know, we inject some NOS directly into this podcast, we can speed over to wherever it is he currently is and get a clue for what movie we're talking about next week. Next week's movie begs the question, what if Nathan had a brother? Well... Uh, that's the clue for what we're talking about next week, <laughs> where hopefully Bally will be here to talk about what we're talking about next week. Uh-huh. And, you know, we talked about it before, but happy Thanksgiving to all of you and yours out there. Yeah. Good luck, I would say, with your Black Friday shopping, if you're doing that sort of thing. I, I don't know why you would anymore, but mm-hmm. uh, have fun, I guess. And, uh, yeah, I got nothing else to talk about. I will say... Oh, I will say this. There's some there's some news, uh, uh, Nathan, on on the bunny front in my household. Oh. We're recording this the weekend of my birthday, uh-huh. and I went out and got a new rabbit. Yay! So we had an odd number. We had three, uh-huh. and one of them is not fixed and would not get along with the other two, so he's been separated. So we're like, why don't we get him a, a friend, a little partner? So- we got our first female rabbit. Fun name. I have, I'm hovering around a name. She's all white, uh-huh. um, very fluffy. Race war. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, that, that hit me. We're just in the right spot. Uh, I was hovering around Beatrice. Cute. But I don't know. Because because we keep calling her the bride of the other bunny. Mm. And I'm like, she could be the bride. She could be little Beatrice kiddo. So I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But or Tiffany, like the bride of Chucky. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Tiffany would be good. <laughs> uh, Tiffany and Theo. That's the rabbit's names. That would be pretty good. That's good. Well, all that to say, we got to say one final thing here, which is rest in peace, Oatmeal. Yes. Uh, gone but not forgotten, little buddy. And uh, as as always, let's go, Menage! <laughs> Monica! No! Ah! <laughs> Excelsior! 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 Oh, look it up! Hello YouTube! If you've made it this far, thanks! Could you do us one more favor? Could you hit those like and subscribe buttons? Maybe leave us a comment on what you think of the show. We'd really appreciate it. Join us again next week for an all new episode. Bye!